the first Battlefield 1 paid DLC has dropped. They shall not pass. And we've been introduced to the French army, four new maps, a new game mode, a new tank, a new behemoth and several new weapons. Let's talk about those maps first. There's Verdun Heights, Fort de Vaux, Soissons and Rupture, all of which offer varied gameplay and have a very different feel about them. Verdun Heights is a fiery hell where you're fighting in a valley with the transition between a town, some ruins and then a trench system. Fort de Vaux offers a lockers-like grenade fest inside a French stronghold. In Soissons we're fighting across the green fields of France and with Rupture the action takes place across an abandoned battlefield with overgrown trenches, the carcasses of long destroyed tanks and beautiful red poppies in their tens of thousands covering the land. We've got a new game mode too, Frontlines, which is a combination of Conquest and Rush which ends up playing like a mini operations. The mode consists of a battlefield of several consecutive linear capture points, where both teams start fighting over the centre point. The battle then seesaws back and forth depending on who gets those capture points, until you end up trying to blow up a couple of telegraph stations at the enemy base. But unlike in Rush, where if you don't succeed, you just go back to the last capture point and you start again. This leads to some long and short battles and plenty of amazing comebacks and tight run games. The two new operations are Beyond the Marne, using Soissons and Rupture, and Devil's Anvil, played on Verdun Heights and Fort Nouveau. In Beyond the Marne, the attacking French forces have more tanks than the defending Germans, but they have access to the massive new field mortars that have to be played to be believed. Devil's Anvil is an infantry-only operation with a difficult fight down the valley and up the hill of Verdun, and then through the grenade-infested concrete and brick holes of Fort Nouveau. At the moment, Beyond the Marne seems to favour the attackers, and Devil's Anvil is a defender's paradise, but I'm sure we'll see some balance adjustments made by DICE over the next few months to sort out any issues. Although I've had some fun earning the new weapons, I haven't used them much, so I'll do another video about them once I feel I've got some proper gameplay under my belt. The new behemoth, a monster tank that makes the normal heavies look like toys, is a joy to behold when you see it crawling across the battlefield, until that is you realise it's coming towards you, and it's time to run away. Overall, I think the They Shall Not Pass DLC has been a success, and is well worth the £12 asking price in the UK, and bodes very well for the future expansions. We're still yet to see an effective patch from DICE to address the grenade spam issues that break up the flow of the game, but it's still lots and lots of fun to play, and I heartily recommend They Shall Not Pass to any fan of Battlefield 1. Okay, that's enough from me. Please put your questions and comments down below. Thank you very, very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Sers-toi de cette trousse de secours